receivable. But I'm going to first do the old method where we have a negative receivable to compare and contrast, and then we'll do the new method here. So I'm not going to I'm not going to make the receive payment from it. I'm just going to record this. I'm going to say save it and close it. And then what happens on the customer center over here? Now we've got the sales order. Sales order is good to go. If I go back on over here, once again, no, nothing happened for the sales order. Nothing happened. So nothing happened uh, with that one. So then, like before I get the, before I order the inventory from my vendor, I'm like, you need to pay me, let's say $50 uh, in order. To, so, so I'm gonna do the old method then, is I'm gonna go to the receive payment before we enter the invoice and without the turning on of the new, uh, the new feature uh, of, the, of, the, of the liability account of like unearned revenue. Now, again, if you don't, if you don't have the ability to turn on the new thing uh, be, because possibly you have an older version or something like that, then this would be the method that you might use. And even if you do have the option, Again, we'll compare and contrast some of the complicated or the differences between the two. It might you might still not want to turn it on because it might cause more confusion, and it does add a clearing account and whatnot. So we'll talk about that. We're comparing the two. So again, I'm going to say this is number two. There's our customer name, and we don't have an invoice to tie out to down here because we haven't made an invoice yet. We're going to collect the payment first. So the payment is going to be let's say for fifty dollars. That's the down payment. Are you sure that's enough for this guy? We should, okay, that's, it'll be fine. This guy will pay us. 020127, and let's say we get cash down. There's no, nothing to tie it out to. So when I record this, what's it gonna do? Well, the customer prepayment usually will decrease the accounts receivable, but there's nothing in accounts receivable. So it's gonna make a negative accounts receivable. That's wrong. What should it do instead? It should create a positive liability. Why do we want it to create a negative receivable? Because it's easier to make a subledger for the negative receivable, right? That's that's the point. So it's easy. It's kind of easier from the bookkeeping side. So this is where we have something different happening here. So we have the sales receipt. I'm not sure if I spelled that right. What's going to happen? We're going to say we get cash. I'm going to put it into cash instead of undeposited funds. It might go into undeposited funds, but the other side's going to go to the accounts receivable like so and then cash where's my decimals up here why does everything else have decimals but not this one it's crazy you're making me crazy with the inconsistency so we have now we end up with this negative receivable so so again that's not quite right because it should be down here as a liability account not a negative receivable but when I try to track the subledger, it's easier to track a subledger to one account than two accounts. That's that's the trade-off that we're kind of trying to deal with here. So let's go ahead and record it, check it out over here. So we'll save it, we'll close it. It says a credit for the overpayment will remain on the customer's account. You can click print credit memo to save the transaction and print a credit memo. Click OK to save the transaction. Click cancel. So I'm going to say OK and boom, recorded. Let's see what happened then. Back to the report. So we're going to go to the balance sheet. And we know that we put, we put money into undeposited funds. I'm not going to get into making the deposit from there, but... It's going into basically a cash account, 010127. And so there's the $50 payment. That looks good. Okay, closing that out. The other side is going into negative accounts receivable. AR 010127. That's going to be the payment. There's the $50. It doesn't make it negative here because we had a bunch of stuff in it already. But when I look at the subledger by customer, it'll be negative for the subledger. So if I close this out, reports drop down and we go into customers and receivables and we say we want the customer balance detail, let's say. You can see here, now we have this AR for this customer has a negative balance. Well, what does it mean if there's a negative AR for that particular customer? That means that they owe us, uh, that, that, that means that we owe them money. <laughs> we owe them money. That's a liability. So it should be a liability. But 
Look how nicely it fits into the AR subledger because we want it to be connected to the customer. That's basically the problem. On the internal bookkeeping side, what happens if I go to the customer center over here and I look at this, my, am I, and I'm, I'm trying to see what, what's going on with this customer, it looks, it looks reasonable over here because I'm like, okay, what happened? Well, there was an estimate and then a sales order and then a payment, but that payment isn't tied out to anything, right? And it, I can then tie it out in the future when I make the invoice. And so that, so it looks easy internally from an internal standpoint as well. So, so from a bookkeeping standpoint, this actually works fairly well for the subledger. The problem is from reporting standpoints, when I report this for financial reporting, I have a, I have my AR is too low and my, my liabilities are too low. So what we would need to do is do an adjusting entry possibly at the end of the year to properly adjust the accounts receivable and the, and the liability. And that system can work fairly well. For, and it's as long as you know what you're doing, you can, you can be, I think, you, you know, a lot of small companies particularly can basically to mid-sized companies can basically work around that kind of system and make the, the internal book, bookkeeping basically as easy as possible. That would be kind of the focus uh, of that kind of system. So also just note that after we're, after we've completed this whole process, then, then it will be correct. And it's just a timing difference. So if I go into my customer balance over here, that negative amount, once I actually uh, uh, do the work and give the surfboard, enter the invoice, these two things will net out and it'll be positive again and we'll be back in business. Also just realize that if I go to the bottom of this report, it ties out to what's on the balance sheet, hopefully. This ties, this is at 92,957,93, balance sheet uh, 92,957,93. So we, that's, I mean, again, that's the key. We have to have the subledger tying in to the accounts receivable, even though in this case, this, the accounts receivable is too low by that negative amount. But if you break it out into a liability account, then it becomes a little bit difficult to tie the subledger out. So what do you, I mean, what are we going to do? We're going to have two subledger uh, kind of accounts. One, that's basically what's going to happen. We're going to have two kind of reports on the subledger account that will tie out to a liability and to the accounts receivable. So that adds a little bit of complication uh, to it. So again, there's pros and cons to the methods, but we will continue with this next time. And next time, of course, what we will do is we will uh, complete the purchase of the inventory, then we'll turn around and invoice the customer, and then we'll see if we can receive the payment from the customer.